home pasteurized eggs. Easier than you think. You don't actually need a sous vide cooker. But just in case you're curious how the different methods compare, I tested out all the questions that I could think of. The most common guideline as seen from the USDA is holding whole eggs at 140 Fahrenheit for at least three and a half minutes to reduce the bacteria to a negligible amount. This calculation is based on the D value, which is the decimal reduction time, or the time it takes to reduce the microbe to one tenth of what it was before. The higher the temperature, the quicker the process. For salmonella, the D value decreases by one tenth for every eight degree Fahrenheit. You can calculate accordingly the pasteurization time at a higher or lower temperature. Hot tap water tends to hover around 140 Fahrenheit, and it's basically a free sous vide cooker for this purpose. All you need to do is run it until the temperature is brought to a consistent 140 Fahrenheit, put the eggs in, and keep the water going for 3.5 minutes. If your tap goes over 144 Fahrenheit on the hottest setting, keep some cold water running too, since that's the temperature at which egg whites start to congeal. Just drop your eggs in, check that the water temperature is at 140, and set a timer. Fetch out your heat-treated eggs after 3.5 minutes, and maybe label them since it's almost impossible to tell them apart from raw eggs. Now onto the sous vide method. The most common method calls for 135 Fahrenheit for 70 to 75 minutes, which is probably an overkill based on the paper we just looked at, which finds 35 minutes sufficient for 132 Fahrenheit. But longer is safer, plus I wondered how well these egg whites whip up after extended heat treatment. So I'm trying to overkill here. Here they are at the end of the process. Remove from heat and label them. Here they are for a side-by-side -side look. This is the raw egg. This is the 140 degree hot tap water treated egg. And this is the 135 sous vide egg. Side-by-side, -side, the slow and low sous vide cooking yields visibly cloudier egg whites whereas the quick tap treatment produced very clear egg whites. The 140 degree egg is pretty much indiscernible from the raw from looks alone, whereas the 135 degree sous vide egg is noticeably different from the raw. I was really curious if the cloudiest egg white will whip into a meringue, so I started my whip test with the sous vide egg whites. It took a miserable amount of time with an electric mixer, about 6 minutes to whip up to stiff peaks. I would definitely not whip this by hand. But for what it's worth, it will whip up enough that you can turn the bowl upside down without a meringue falling down. Still, when looked closely, it feels like a light foam that's not as thick or stable as a regular meringue from raw egg whites. Next up is the hot tap water egg. This whipped to a stiff peak in less than 2 minutes and feels a lot more stable, with more volume. Of course, this passes the flip test easily. And when you scrape the bowl with a spatula, you can tell this won't deflate as easily. Side by side, the 140 egg white hold bigger bubbles and is a lot more stable than a sous vide one. Lastly for control, this is the raw egg. Took about the same time as the hot tap one, just under two minutes. Really stiff, even bigger bubbles, more volume, and harder to deflate. Here are all three meringues side by side. The longer the heating time, the lesser the volume. Quick pasteurization does appear to disrupt the protein a little compared to the raw, but not by nearly as much. The sous vide method is by far the least stable, while the hot tap one is almost interchangeable with the raw. Here's the meringue by volume. No obvious difference between the yolks though. Both methods produced perfect egg yolk for Caesar dressing, homemade mayo, quick hollandaise, or any dip of your choice. Like and subscribe!